What's happening everyone? Welcome back to the shop. Now in this video I'm going to be talking about Japanese hand saws. So I'll take you through them, the different types. I'll tell you the difference between Western saws and Japanese saws. I'll give you a quick demonstration and uh, hopefully there'll be some information in this video that'll help you make up your minds whether you buy Japanese or Western saws or whether you want to just add Japanese saws to your shop. So uh, yeah, let's jump in and take a quick look. Okay, let's take a look at these four particular saws that I have. These are made by Goyokachu. Now, if I butcher the Japanese pronunciations of these saws, forgive me. I'm Irish and I can just about speak English as it is. And uh, yeah, so I, I might get the names of these or the pronunciation is slightly wrong. But um, like I say, they're made by Goyokachu. If you're going to buy some Japanese saws, try and get ones made by a Japanese manufacturer and um, that are actually made in Japan. They will be good quality saws. You will see saws that are like Japanese saws, they're just advertised as pull saws, um, they're not as good. And one of the great things about Japanese saws is they're rel relatively inexpensive compared to Western saws. I think these four cost me around 120 euros for the set, which for four saws is actually pretty good in my opinion. Now let's start with the first one, and this is a Ryoba saw. And this is, um, I suppose it's a general purpose saw, but it's double sided, so you have a rip saw on one side and a cross cut saw on the other side. So you're getting two saws for the price of one, which is handy. So like I say, this is for your general purpose stuff, dimensioning materials, cutting things down to size. Um, it's a great saw, it flies through plywood. I'll show you that now in a second. One of the main differences between Western saws and Japanese saws is that the fact that Japanese saws cut on the pull stroke, which is why they're called, often called pull saws. Western saws cut on the push stroke. And because they cut on the pull stroke, they pull themselves into tension, which is why, as you can see, you can have super thin blades, which is very, very handy because you get a nice, fine cut. And also, the saw set is super fine. It's actually the same thickness as the spine itself, where on a Western saw, the teeth, you will see the saw set. If you look down along any Western saw, you will see a wide saw set. So you get a, a, a kind of a large curve in your cut. It's um, the width of the cut will be wider than the spine of the saw itself. So you really want to be careful that you're in your waist when you're cutting with a Western saw. A lot of people find it easier to um, cut on the pull stroke rather than on the push coke or start the cut on the pull stroke, which is why some people prefer these um, Japanese saws over Western saws. Me, I can take it or leave it. It's 50-50, I don't mind starting on a push stroke or a pull stroke. That's not what it's about for me. What it's about for me is the precision and the quickness these things cut with and how easy they are to use. That's why I prefer them. Now, I do like Western saws as well. I have some Western saws. Um, for cutting larger stuff, I find Western saws better just because you can get a lot more force with them. I find that's just my opinion. Um, you might have different mileage to me. But yeah, that's the Ryoba saw, your general purpose saw. Next up is the Kataba saw, and this is a cross-cut saw. Again, nothing really to say about this. It's a short spine on it. It's known as the Kataba saw. Again, all these are, have replaceable blades, so that's another difference between your Western saws and your Japanese saws. You won't resharpen these, whereas you will. A good quality Western saw can be resharpened. These ones, when the blades wear out, just change them. And uh, you can just keep the handles, and just they're so easy. Just pull the screw, swap out the blade, nice and simple. Next up then is what's known as a Dezuki saw or your Dozuki saw. Again, if the pronunciations are wrong, forgive me. This is your dovetail saw, so you can see it has a lot longer spine just to give extra tension to that blade. It's super, super fine. A very, very small set on the teeth. Again, it's the width of the spine of the saw. So for cutting dovetails, I love this thing it's because of the thickness of that blade, it is super fine. It makes it super easy for cutting our dovetails, which I'll show you in a minute. Next up, we have our Kojuki saw. Again, I probably butchered that pronouncement, but this is a flush cut saw. And as you can see, this one is super, super thin. So uh, again, the saw set or the set of the teeth is the same width as the, the spine of the blade itself. So for cutting off dowels or flush cutting anything, you can see I can put that onto my bench and it doesn't mark the bench whatsoever because there's no set to those teeth and it's ideal for flush cutting. So that's the four saws, the Ryoba, the Kataba, the Dozuki, and I believe it's called a Kajuki. Now I probably butchered that, but that's your flush cut saw. 
Right guys, I just have a piece of three quarter inch plywood in the vise there, so we're gonna cut it with the Ryoba saw. Just to give you a look at the teeth on this, if the camera will focus, there we go. So there is your rip cut side, flip it around, and you have your cross cut side. So uh, again, it's two saws for the price of one, which is handy. Um, and as you'll see now, it cuts on the pull stroke. So for starting your cuts, it makes it a lot easier for some people to find it. It's just one pull back and here's your cut started. And there's, there's, you don't put pressure on these, you just let them cut themselves. So it's very, very light. You can use them two-handed as well, so that's why the handles are so long. They're designed to be used, I suppose, the same way as you grip a golf club. Thumbs forward like this. And you can use it two-handed. As you can see, it flies through the plywood. I'm not putting any weight or any effort on this cut. You get nice, straight, clean cuts. And the beauty of having such a fine set on your teeth is that you get very, very little tear out, if any at all, if the camera focuses on that. There you go. You can see just how fine a cut it puts on that. And there's no breakout in the plywood whatsoever, which is nice. Right guys, I've just marked out some dovetails in a piece of maple here. So we're going to use the dovetail saw, or as it's known, the Dezuki saw. And uh, let's see if we can get the camera to focus on that. And no. There we go, at last. So there's the teeth on the Dozuki saw or the dovetail saw. And you can see the spine along the back of it just to give it an extra bit of rigidity. Again, this cuts on the pull stroke and is extremely thin as you can see there. So yeah, I'll try and give a demonstration of just cutting dovetails. Obviously, it's hard to convey what it's like to use a saw. You'll have to pick them up and hold them and try and use them yourselves. But again, it's a nice and easy cut on the pull stroke. Super fine. Just stay just outside our line with these. There's almost no set to the teeth. There we go, there's our dovetails cut. So they are that easy to use, and like I say, it's super fine. You're removing very little material. There isn't a big set to the blade or to the teeth. Um, they are the same width as the blade itself, so um, that's why I like them. So there you go, dovetails cut in a couple of seconds. And not too bad a job, if I say so myself. Right guys, next up is the Kataba, which looks very, very similar. It's the same size as our Daizuki saw. But if the camera will focus, come on camera, help me out here. You can see the teeth are slightly more coarse, more aggressive then on our dovetail saw, and also we have a little stubby spine, so we're not looking for all that su support that we need for, uh, that extra precision we need for our dovetail saw. So, just have the bench hook set up here, I'll just chop through a bit of maple and just through a bit of plywood just to show you again, again, hard to convey, but it's just a quick demonstration. Um, one little tip, if you have um, a tool well like this, you can turn your bench hook around as this cuts on the pull stroke and you can pull against your tool well which is handy and use your bench hook the opposite way around for your Japanese saws. So again, nice and easy to start off, no pressure needed whatsoever. It's so easy to keep these things straight, that's the beauty of them. Nice and simple, just a piece of maple. Again, you can pull back against your bench hook because you're pulling and it uh, just gives that extra bit of stability. Start your cut, get it going both sides, line it up. Nice and simple, nice square cut through a piece of hard maple. So uh, yeah, nice and simple. 
Right guys, back to this vise just to demonstrate our flush cut. And this is our flush cut saw. If you get the camera to focus on that, you'll see we have a coarse set of teeth and a finer set of teeth on each side. So again, you're getting two little saws for the price of one with this lad. Um, you can see just how flexible this thing is. It is super flexible and super fine, ideal for flush cuts. And because there's no set to the teeth, you don't have to worry about marking what you're cutting. So I'm just gonna cut this piece of um, walnut that's popping out of the vise there. So imagine that's a dowel or something sticking through your workpiece and you don't want to mark the top of it. So again, it's ideal for flush cutting. It'll cut it straight off and you don't mark your workpiece. So for dowels or anything like that, or for protruding tenons or whatever you're doing, any kind of joint making, and you want to flush cut something off, just nice and trim it up and flush it off with this guy. And you won't mark your top, which is nice. Okay, let's wrap this one up then, guys. Just go through maybe some disadvantages of the Japanese saws. Um, again, you won't be able to sharpen them. The saw set is so fine, the teeth are so fine, and the, I think the steel they use is not good for sharpening, unlike a Western saw, like a good quality Western saw, you will be able to buy specific foils for sharpening those teeth on those saws. These are just a case to replace the blade. It's just loosen the screw and pull the blade out like that, nice and simple. You just order a new blade. So that might be one disadvantage for you. Another disadvantage is the hand position. Um, if you have sore wrists, arthritis, or anything like that, you might find that a little bit uncomfortable to have your wrist in that position, rather than with the Western saw handles, you're here, and you're, you're, the force of the cut is right behind your wrist into your hand. It's not kind of pushing over your hand, if you see what I'm saying. So um, again, if you're suffering with any joint pains, bone pains, you might find the Japanese saws a little bit sore to use, although they don't require very much force. Um, they're just a light push-pull and they kind of cut through themselves. But that's just one thing to bear in mind. Again, I find the Western saws, that you can get a lot more force with them just because you're directly, your fist and your, your whole arm is directly behind the line of force of that push. So that's just one small thing. There's not too much to gripe about these things. I love them. So just to go through the names again, you have your Ryoba, your general purpose type saw. This will be a rip saw and a cross cut saw all in one. You will have your kataba, which is your cross-cut saw. So you'll see the small spine on the kataba type saws. Your dozuki saw, again, that's your dovetail saw. So if you're looking up these online and you see the names, that's what they are. And then the one that I'm not sure how you pronounce, I think it's kajuki. I could be butchering that and I apologize if I am. That's just your little flush cut saw. So that's it guys, I will leave links in the description as to where I bought this specific set. Again, I think it worked out at about 120 quid. And once you consider you have a rip saw, a large rip saw, a large cross cut saw, a smaller cross cut saw, a dovetail saw and a flush cut saw. High quality steel, really fine, nice cuts for in around 120 quid. That's one of the main advantages of these Japanese saws that and the fact that you can start your cuts on the pull stroke. They're super fine You saw how easy those dovetails were to cut it flies through most materials So they are a great set of saws if you're thinking about getting into woodworking and um, You have much money and you want to get yourself some good quality saws the Japanese saws are definitely ones to look at So that's it guys. Hopefully this has been helpful to you again comments and questions below I will get back to you and as always Take it easy and get out there and do some woodworking yourselves. All right, guys, see you in the next one.